You're a wizard, Harry. I'm a what? You're a wizard, Harry. I don't know what that intro was about. <laughs> I don't know what that intro was about, but there we are. So welcome to this video on web scraping. Uh, and in this one, we're going to be doing some logging in to a website. And then we can scrape some stuff from behind the login. Wow! Crazy! Because this is a right pain normally. Like, you try and scrape something and you've got to log in. Oh, how do you do that? Well, in this video, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn you that. I'm going to learn you that. Right, so, uh, what should we do first? Well, let's have a look at the website we're going to be scraping and logging into. It's this one here. It's just a website that gives us some details about uh, companies, publicly listed companies, and it tells us how many people, well, what the percentage of their shares are being sold short. Uh, if you don't know what that means, probably have a look at my Python for Finance series where I go into all sorts of nitty gritty details like that. But that's irrelevant for this tutorial because all we're going to be doing is logging in and scraping. So um, if you have a look, uh, we're on this watch list page, right? And this is specific to every user. So I'm logged in at the moment. So if we log out, right, come back to that uh, watch list like that. Uh, oh, we've got to log in. Oh, no, this is terrible. So I'm going to just get rid of all the stuff that's in the log here a second. Um, so in order for us to actually view this page with Python web scraping, we need to log in. So what we need to do is look at the method, the sort of request that goes through when we log in. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to be using the Chrome developer tools there to the right of the screen. And we are going to go to the network tab. And we then are going to click preserve log like that. We're going to log in and it's going to show us what happens when we log in. Okay, so I've got a username, I've got a password. You're going to see the password, by the way. Also, by the time this video is out, I would have changed the password. So not that it even matters anyway, because I don't really use this website for anything. So we're going to log in. Oh, we can see things happening on the right. Okay, right. So what have we got? Well, I guess it's this one at the top called login. This one at the top login, it's a post method, right? It's got a 302 status, which basically means after it's, the request has been fulfilled, it's redirected us. And what it's done is it's redirected us to this watch list. So if let's look at this uh, one here. And we can see there's some headers. So the headers we're interested in are... Let's have a look. Um, we're looking at the request header, the form data. Right, so the form data is down there. Uh, is there anything else we need to be aware of? Um, no, not really, to be fair. Only one other thing, actually, thinking about it. Um, yeah, there is something. It's called a CSRF token, um, which is a cross-site request forgery token. And all that is is a random token generated by a server on the first request that you have to a website um, and it basically is kept with every subsequent request you make to the website after that point it just is a way of preventing cross-site request um, scripting uh, cross-site forgery um, yeah cross-site scripting there we go I can't speak today whatever um, that's just something to be aware of for this particular website not all websites have it um, so that's this um, CF, if I make it a little bit bigger so you can see it a little bit better, that's that CSRF middleware token. You'll notice here we've got this thing called next. That is so that we can redirect to the page we want to do. We don't need to concern ourselves with that, so don't worry about that. We've got the login here and we've got the password, which is password. Oh, how clever is that? So this is the form data and the route we're going to be using. So the, what the, the actual request URL is up here. It's uh, accounts forward slash login, and it's a post method. Right, so what we need to actually do is we need to do a few things. Uh, let's go over to Python, and we'll actually start doing all that sort of stuff. Okay, we'll open the terminal, and we will say my main, like that. First thing we need to do, let's do your standard gubbins, and we're going to say from BS4, import beautiful soup as BS and then also import requests. There we go. So let's get the URL. Uh, that is just short tracker forward slash like this. 
Then we want to have the login route, which was, um, it was accounts forward slash login, like that. Um, there's another thing we need to do, and I, I did actually forget to mention this, even though I said there's nothing else we need, really need to mention. There is actually something actually we need to mention here, and that's that these these headers, the request headers, right? They tell the brow the website, the server that we're actually viewing this using Chrome, or we're actually a real real person and not just a bot, and we can mock those using a headers object. So what we can do, we can take these things here, this user agent bit of the headers and we can put these in our headers um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a little object uh, we'll go back here and we're going to say headers little object and we'll say um, user agent user dash agent like this and we'll paste that as a string I didn't even copy it oh well uh, let's do this copy let's try it again Second time's a charm. No one ever says that. There's also another thing as well. Again, there's, there's two actual things I need to have mentioned that I've forgotten about for this specific website. So when I was looking at this earlier, there's another thing we need to add in here, and that is um, an origin URL, um, which we actually might not need the origin URL. Uh, we're going to try it without, because I can't see it here, so we don't actually necessarily need that. But one thing we do need is the referrer. Um, this is when we're logging in. So we're going to need to make sure we have a referrer. So the referrer is going to be... Actually, you know what? We're going to put in the, the origin just to be safe. Origin. So this is where we've come from to make the request. Not all websites require this, so check your headers in the Chrome console if you're looking at a different type and try to sort of match them up as best as possible, but do it in a minimal way. Don't just take every single header out there because it's a waste of time. So referrer is going to be the URL plus the login route. The reason for that referrer is so that the website knows where we've actually come from because we could log in from many, many different pages. Uh, it's not the most important thing, but it will throw some wobblies this particular website. So the origin, yeah, we do actually need the origin and the referrer. So they're there. Um, yeah, they're in the Chrome console. So you can see the origin is here and the referrer is under that there. We don't need um, the next watch listing. We don't need that for what we're doing. We know what page we're going to go to next. We just need to log in so we can get some cookies. So we've got our headers. Great. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use request to create a session object. So we just call it S. We'll say S is equal to request.session. Now what a session is, and that's not a capital S there, it should be a normal S. Um, a session basically is going to hold a lot of the data that we get normally. So if we have a look over here, we get cookies that come back, we get many little things that come back um, in response in the response headers that are over here, sorry. And all a session does is sort of keep all that in memory like a normal browser does. So we don't have to carry on posting stuff. Um, it's just going to sort of remember that we're logged in essentially. The, the next thing we need to do is we actually need to make a request to the website initially. And the reason for that is because, you know, I mentioned that CSRF token. Well, we need to get that first because we can't just um, take it from here. We can't just copy this token because, like I say, it's going to be randomly generated on each request. So it would stop working pretty quickly. So what we need to do is we need to just make a standard get request um, to get the token. So we're going to say CSRF underscore token is equal to session get so this we don't need to say request.get because we're going to be using that session object for everything from now on if you've, you've seen the previous tutorials we used requests.get but now we're using s.get i.e. we're using the session and then we're going to get the cookies and from the cookies because this is um, a dictionary object we're just going to say I want the key the CS token that should be a new, that's wrong, that's right. There we go. Um, so that's just gonna get us that token. So if we look back um, over here, the reason I know what it's called is because it comes back in the tokens. Uh, where is it? It's in here somewhere, there we go. The set cookie is CS, 
RF token and it's in our um, response headers. I should also mention that we do get, so we get what are called request headers, that's what we pass to the, the website and response headers are what it sends back. I forgot to mention that, but that's that's what happens there. Okay, so we've got the token. So what do we need to do next? Well, we need to create a uh, login payload op uh, object. That's going to basically be the same thing that we have here in this form data. Um, and all these things usually are is a sort of key value store. So what we do here is we say login payload, just to keep things nice and simple. We know what we're naming it. We're going to say login. Uh, the login is this, like that. We're going to say password, and uh, put in the password. Like I say, that password's going to be changed by the time we come back, by the time this video is uploaded. Get this, um, and then we're also going to just say that CS. Uh, I'm, not, I'm going to stop saying that. I'm just going to say the token from now on, because I keep messing the letters up. My God. Right, so that's what's happening. We have got the login payload. Um, we're going to then post this to that login route. Uh, something I really need to make sure that you're aware of is that these keys here, so login, password, CA, uh, token thing, um, they have to match exactly with what this says in here, what the form data says. So it might, for example, on the website you're using, it might say email or it might say username here as opposed to saying login. Just make sure it matches exactly because otherwise you'll be getting loads of errors and you'll be like, oh, I don't know why it's working. It looks like it's working. I follow the tutorial step by step, but it won't work. And I know this because I had a complete issue with this nonsense the other day when I was trying to do something very similar. So let's go and make the request and we'll log into the website. So we'll say login request is equal to, remember, s dot post, we'll, we'll put port, no, dot login root. Have I got a login root? Did we set the login root? I haven't seen that. Oh, okay, I want to do that. So we, mm, yeah, I don't know why I've named that that. Why did I just name it login? I don't know. Login root. Doesn't really matter no. until we try and ruin the program and it doesn't work. Uh, so yeah, next thing we need to do, headers is equal to headers and the data is going to be equal to login payload. So what we're expecting now, um, if I quickly print this, say login rec, what we're going to be expecting is it to say response 200. Sound fair enough? The reason we're expecting that is because it should have gone through correctly and 200 is an okay response. It's like, yes, it's all it's all well. If it comes back with like a 400 error, we know something's gone wrong. Okay, so we just save that. I don't know what that's doing. And we'll run it. Oh, we got response 200. What did I say? I said that's what we'd get. Wow, that's surprising. Usually, anyone who watches these videos knows that the first time I run things, it just doesn't go well. So, hey, hey, that's working. And we could use that response. So we could we could say a dot status code, for example. And we could use that in like an if statement and say, if it's not 200, then we need to go back and loop back and do it again or something like that. Or maybe we need to throw an error and report it to the user or so, something like that. So you can use that status code that we just had there. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to get the cookies that came back with the login response request. There we go. So we need to say, no, yeah, response, I was right. Cookies are equal to login rec dot cookies. Okay, and that's just going to include some of the cookies that came back. Um, I did notice when I was testing this, sometimes sessions are a bit special. So I they they don't always do what you want them to do. You'd expect them to keep the cookies, but they're not doing it for some reason all the time. So I'm just going to explicitly give them the cookies when we're doing a request. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use Beautiful Soup, um, and we're all we're going to do. We're not going to like go into depth in scraping here because we've we've done the login, which is the important bit. I'm just going to show you that it actually does work. So we're going to say um, soup 
uh, is equal to uh, BS S get URL plus, and we wanted to go to the watch lists. Okay, and we want to say dot text, and then we say HTML parser because that's the parser we want to use. Other parsers are available; we don't have to use them. Um, and what we're going to look for, so we're going to inspect this. So right-click inspect. Um, you can see here where I'm pointing that there's a table with the ID companies. So if we get that, we're expecting to see in the body that there's going to be ALPLC, AL, AAPLC 7.1 or something like that for a percentage. Five funds are short it and then the most recent change. That's what we're expecting. So we're going to see this bit here. It's not highlighting it. We're expecting to see that. So if I was to quickly say um, T body uh, is equal to soup dot find, and if we say table, we can say um, ID is equal to companies like that. There you go. See previous videos for more examples on how we can actually scrape because there are other ways of doing it. You know, if you wanted to get, say, for example, um, the class, we can do that in a different way. We can also do, um, we can also filter elements based on things like their type or what have you. And you do that in a different way with Beautiful Soup. So see previous videos. Okay, so I'm, all I'm going to do now, we're just going to print it. Um, we're just going to print the T body, and I'm going to expect to see that HTML that we're seeing here, so we're going to be looking for 7.1%. That's what we're going to look for, right? Okay, we'll do that, and we'll run. And there we go. So we can see that we've logged in because we've got, um, here we've got the 7.1%, we've got five for the number of sh funds short, we've got ALPLC, um, and this is the companies that my account is watching, which is really good because obviously if we log out, and go to the same page again. Look, there isn't any. There's no. There's none of that nonsense there. There's none of my the companies I'm watching there. And you don't have to be logged in in Chrome to act for this to work either, because we can run it again. It will still carry on working because we're logging in with Python. So, hopefully, you found my inane rambling somewhat entertaining, and you found this video somewhat useful. If you have, uh, leave a like down below. Also, leave comments because I do read them all, and especially if you have questions, because I will pretty much answer every single question that's reasonably uh, you know formed um, so yeah thank you very much for watching have a good one